Hello and welcome back to a new chapter. The capacitor forms a vital element of any electrical and electronic circuit. Fundamentally, one must remember that the capacitor blocks DC current and allows AC current to flow through it. The use of a capacitor varies from circuit to circuit, but this passive element finds applications in microelectronic circuits to mega power systems. In this chapter, we will try to examine some of the most used connections with capacitors and its purpose in the circuit. So I say let's begin and first we will talk about coupling capacitors. A coupling capacitor is a capacitor which is used to couple or link together only the AC signal from one circuit element to another. The capacitor blocks the DC signal from entering the second element and as a result only passes the AC signal. Coupling capacitors are useful in many types of circuits where AC signals are the desired signals to be output while DC signals are just used for providing power to certain components in the circuit but should not appear in the output. For example, a coupling capacitor normally is used in an audio circuit such as a microphone circuit. DC power is used to give power to parts of the circuit, such as the microphone, which needs DC power to operate. So, DC signals must be present in the circuit for powering purposes. However, when a user talks into the microphone, the speech is an AC signal, right? And this AC signal is the only signal in the end we want to be present at the output. When we pass the AC signals from the microphone onto the output device, say speakers to be played or a computer to be recorded, we don't want to pass the DC signal. Remember, the DC signal was only to power parts of the circuit, right? We don't want it showing up on the output recording. On the output, we only want the AC speech signal, right? So to make sure only the AC passes while the DC signal is blocked, we place a coupling capacitor in the circuit. Now let's see how to place a coupling capacitor in a circuit. In order to place a capacitor in a circuit for AC coupling, the capacitor is connected in series with the load to be coupled. A capacitor is able to block low frequencies such as DC, and pass high frequencies such as AC because it is a reactive device, right? It responds to different frequencies in different ways. To low frequency signals, it has a very high impedance or resistance, so low frequency signals are blocked from going through. To high frequency signals, it has a low impedance or resistance, so high frequency signals are passed through easily. Now that we know what a coupling capacitor is and how to place in a circuit for coupling, the next thing is how to choose an appropriate value for the coupling capacitor. The value of a coupling capacitor depends on the frequency of the AC signal being passed through. Capacitors are reactive devices, meaning they offer different impedance or resistance to signals of different frequencies. To low frequency signals, such as DC with a frequency of 0 Hz, capacitors offer very high resistance. And this is how capacitors are able to block DC signals from passing through it. However, as the frequency of the signal increases, the capacitor offers progressively less resistance. The capacitor reactance changes according to the formula where F is the frequency and C is the capacitance. Since capacitors offer less reactance at higher frequencies, a very low capacitance value is needed to allow them to pass through. So very high frequency signals need only a very small capacitors, such as in the picofarad range. Capacitors offer greater reactance at lower frequencies and therefore they need much larger capacitance value to allow these low frequency signals to pass through. So low frequency signals will require capacitors in the microfarad range. So coupling capacitors are used in many different applications. 
One of the most common applications is for amplifiers. However, they can be used in practically any circuit that requires DC blocking with AC coupling, such as radio frequency applications. Since audio frequency and radio frequency applications suit a wide range of frequencies that entails frequencies from hertz all the way to megahertz, this covers all the frequencies that are necessary for coupling applications. Alright, so here you can see a rough guideline of capacitors that can be used for various frequencies. So for coupling a 100Hz signal, a 10 microfarad capacitor can be used. For a 1kHz signal, a 1 microfarad capacitor will be good, and so on. Coupling capacitor value is calculated in consideration with the cutoff frequency of the circuit. Remember that any coupling capacitor will form a high-pass filter circuit. Capacitor value and the input impedance of the circuit will decide the cutoff frequency of the high-pass filter. I already explained what input and output impedance for a circuit is, but I will give a brief explanation again. So any device which generates a voltage has what is called an output impedance, which means that the impedance value of its own internal circuitry is seen from the outside, for example, as measured across its outputs. Similarly, any device which expects to receive a voltage input has an input impedance, which is the impedance seen by any equipment connected to its inputs. The output voltage from the source is developed across the input impedance of the destination, which is often called the load impedance or simply the load, and therefore the signal voltage is passed from source to destination. However, the input and output impedances will also affect the current that flows around the circuit too. So please remember that when choosing a coupling capacitor, you need to know first the frequency of the signal that will pass through the capacitor and the input impedance of the circuit in order to calculate an optimal cutoff frequency.